Okay, so we're going to get started. Uh, you got two handouts today. Uh, you actually got your last assignment of the semester. I mean, you have your final, which you got early. Uh, but this is the last one that we're going to do, 204. Um, you're going to be making two light fixtures. One is an interior light fixture, one is an exterior light fixture. This doubles down a little bit on your final project, though, because if you wanted to create a light fixture for your final project, you get the benefit of both. So you get the assignment out of it, but you also get um, your final project has some nice light fixtures in it. So um, you're going to design two light fixtures, one interior, one exterior, and those light fixtures need to have renderings, two for each, one daytime, one nighttime of the light. So there's four total renderings due. Two light fixtures, four renderings. So just make sure you reread it because I don't want to have you lose points just because you didn't turn in a day rendering or a night rendering or whatever. So make sure you to uh, make sure that you actually read through that. Um, these light fixtures aren't due for a little while. They're due on Wednesday, the 27th of November, which is the day before Thanksgiving. So this is one of those touchy ones. I know a lot of you will um, not show up that day. <laughs> I've been around teaching long enough to know that that happens. Um, but at the same time, if I had it due after, you guys would all stress about it during Thanksgiving break, which I don't think is fair either. So uh, it's going to be due before you go away uh, for your Thanksgiving break, if you're going away. Uh, but at least it's due before your Thanksgiving break, not hanging over your head while you're on Thanksgiving break. So um, that's about all I think I need to go over. I think it's pretty self-explanatory going forward. Um, that will be something that you'll be modeling on your own time. We won't spend time in class working on that. It'll be going forward. Um, today we're going to work on exercise 221, which is our interior daytime rendering of our um, retreat. Now, I'm not under the illusion that your retreat is done and you can just do your interior render and walk away and that'll be it for the semester. So in all likelihood, this is a rough draft render. But it's going to get us ready for inserting blocks, putting the lights in, adding layers of detail, etc. Disguised in that is another day where you get to work on your retreat. So there's a whole other day of work that you can get to. And my guess is that a lot of you are starting to get there in terms of having this stuff uh, really starting to resolve. So uh, I went ahead and I opened up my retreat base. This is the base file. This is where I'm going to put my blocks initially. I also opened up another instance of Rhino and have my uh, site file here. So I kind of have them both open so that I can work with them. I'm going to start with the base file here, and I'm going to start by bringing in some light fixtures. So I'm going to use the can light that I made last class. So let me go ahead and I'm going to view this in, uh, let's do it in ghosted mode. I think that's the easiest way of kind of seeing where I am, etc. I also may reorient my view a little bit. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is I need to be able to get in here and place some light fixtures on the ceiling. So we're going to bring them in just like we did before. I'm going to go to file, or Edit Blocks, Insert Block Instance. And I'll go find that light fixture from last class. So it was in um, my folder. And there was my can light. I'll go ahead and say open. This is going to be a linked reference. We'll go ahead and say OK. One more OK. And I'm going to stick it, I hope, right there in that corner. I'm doing that so that I can snap to it. Now I can flip my view around and look down on it. I could even go as far as switching over into the top view. And I can adjust the placement of it. So let me go ahead and type move, and we'll move it over maybe by uh, two feet. And then I'll move it in this direction also by two feet, maybe like that. So it's two feet by two feet in the inside the room. And that looks pretty good. Now I need to figure out where the rest of my placements are going to be. So I might copy this and say let's make one more. I don't know, at four feet from it. Now let's go five feet. There we go. And maybe I'll copy that one again and I'll go five feet in this direction. 
Just trying to provide some general lighting for that room. Hmm. I'm not quite sold on it. Let's go four feet. And then I'll do eight feet. And we'll do four feet. And then eight feet. And so I've put lights along this, this perimeter wall. Uh, maybe I need one more over here on the stairs. So let me copy this and we'll go maybe eight feet over. Something like that. And so I have those lights positioned. Now that I have all of those lights positioned, I can take those and I can copy them vertically down from one floor to the other. So let me go ahead and select them. And then I will copy. And I will go from, let's see here. Let me copy them from there. And we'll drop them down to the floor below. So I have another set there. And maybe I even want to put some over in this section over here. And I'm not quite sure of my placement in this section, but we'll drop them something like that. And let me go ahead and delete these two. And then maybe I need to do a little bit more placement. So let's copy and let's maybe go uh, six feet. There we go. We'll delete this one and these two. And I don't know, uh, eight, eight. we'll do it like that. Sure, why not? So essentially, I'm placing where those lights are going to go in my interior. Now, you may have other types of light fixtures. I'm just going to do these. We went through light fixtures last class, so this is really just an adaptation of what we did last class. So I've gone ahead and I've put all of these lights in. Notice that I inserted the block once, and then I just copied and pasted it. So if I went back and I didn't like my block or I wanted to change the light fixture, or I wanted to make it four inch instead of six inch, I can do that and then just update the block. So they're all installed. I'm not going to put the V-Ray light in this scene though, because I need it in my final rendered scene. So this is my base file. We'll go ahead and save it. I now have the fixtures, the geometry that holds the light in place. I'll jump over into my master site file. I'll go to edit and then blocks, block manager. The base file is new. We'll go ahead and click on update. Replace all the existing materials. And that's now up to date, which means that if I switch into my ghosted mode again, I'm going to see all those light fixtures that I just placed into the scene. So now I need to set up the actual spotlights to go with them. So I'll start by coming up to my V-Ray toolbar. I'll choose Spotlight. Um, let's turn on my center snap here, my end, and my quadrant. There we go. There's center. Now my diameter, or my radius, is going to be one foot. I'm going to do the standard one here. And I will make my height at one foot as well. And this is now my V-Ray Spotlight. So I need to make sure that it's below all of the existing objects. So I may go back to the front view here, zoom, selected, so I can see it. And then I'm going to move it so that it's down below my light itself. I realize that I don't have the OpenGL turned off, so let me go to Tools and then Options. And under View, we're going to turn off that tessellation. There we go. That's a little bit better. So I have this light. It's here in the scene, but I have to adjust the properties for that light. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Edit in V-Ray Asset Editor button. This is my spotlight. I'm going to call this one the upstairs uh, spot, and then I'll let it keep numbering as I, as I make copies of it. So I'm just going to call it upstairs spot for right now. And I need to edit 
the settings on it. So let me open the drawer to the right here. We'll start with the color and texture. This is going to be 255, 214, and 170, but I have to switch to the 0 to 255 range. So 255, 214, and 170. There we go. That's set. My intensity, I'm going to set it for about 60, and I'm going to change my units to be in watts. And under my decay, I'm going to switch to inverse square. So once I have all of those settings correct, the light theoretically should be OK. I can give myself a test on it, though, by getting into my building and performing a test render. So I can get into my building there, and I can perform uh, a quick test render. I don't know what my uh, current render settings are. I don't remember. So I'm going to go back into my settings. Let me look at my render output. Yeah, it's, it's currently really high. So I'm going to drop this way down. We'll say maybe only like 100. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and do that render. So I don't need a huge render to make sure that the light is, is working and functioning. It can be pretty blurry. And I can actually already see with the arc on the wall there that it is, in fact, working. I can see that my, my spots are glowing the way that they should be. Uh, so I'm reasonably happy with it for right now. So we'll go ahead and stop that render. I know enough to know that my light is working. The settings seem about right. Now it's time to go ahead and copy that light to the rest of the lights that I have in the scene. So I set it up once, and then I'm going to copy it. And we're going to copy from the center, I hope. There it is, center. And we'll snap to the rest of these centers. Uh, I might need to turn off my other snaps so that I'm only snapping to the center. These are a little bit harder to see, but we're just going to look through. still have the ones that are over here. Perfect. So now I should have all of those lights installed. And now it's a matter of setting up and getting a view that I'm interested in seeing from a render standpoint. So remember, this is supposed to be an interior daytime render. So the lights can be on, but the outside should already be set. We should already have the HDRI put in. We should already have the sun set. Those were, those were set up two classes ago in exercise, uh, what was it, 119. So you should have that already set up, so I'm assuming for right now that it will be. Next class, we'll change it to a night setting. But now I need to set up my view for the inside. So currently, object selected. If I look over here at my properties, my lens length on my camera is at 28, which is great for an exterior render, but it's not quite as good for an interior render. Interior render, we typically end up switching more like an 18 millimeter. So it's a little bit wider angle. So I can move myself into the space like this and try to set up an interior render. So maybe something like that. But remember, I can also see the camera and see the angle of the camera and make some adjustments to it. And I can do that by clicking this little triangle down here, going to set camera, sorry, set camera, and then show camera. Now, nothing happens in this view, but if I look at it in any of the other views, there you go, I see this little uh, camera icon that represents the camera view. It's easiest to see it in the top view, but it is in these side views. If you want to see it in 3D, I'll switch this view over into a perspective view just so that hopefully you'll be able to see it. Yeah, it's there, but it's a little hard to see among all the rest of the lines. So my point here is that I can actually control the camera and move the camera around. 
So let me select this. This is where the camera originates. And let me go ahead and move that back toward the back corner of the room. Now, as I do that, notice that my view changes. See the, the uh, viewport next to it is changing. I can also specify a specific height for this. So I could make that at a specific height off of uh, the ground. So let me go ahead and let me copy it or move it, excuse me. And I'm going to turn on my point snap and my end point snap. And I could, for example, move it so that it's sitting right at the bottom corner of the floor. There you go in the room. And then I could move it, V for vertical, to a specific height as if I was a specific height. Um, so we could do it, uh, you know, for the whatever the standard height is, five foot ten. Oops. Not quite sure why it's not. Let me try that one more time. Sorry. Move. V, 5 feet 10 inches. My C plane must be off. I apologize. Let me try that one more time. Set C plane, world top. Move. V for vertical. Oops. And somehow I managed to really mess this up. <laughs> All right, one more time. Move. V for vertical. Five feet, 10 inches. Ah, there's my problem. I'm in millimeters. Whoops. How about that? Uh, so I apologize that that happened. And so I'm going to have to reset this whole view. All right. Let's try that again. OK. So I'll get my view approximately where I wanted it. Nothing like spinning my wheels here. Uh, and we should see it in the rest of these views. Zoom, uh, selected. Oh. OK. One more time. Take that point. I can move it so that it snaps to that corner. Then I should be able to move V for vertical and actually specify 5 feet 10 inches. And there you go. Now it's at 5 foot 10. But I can also move it away from the wall slightly. So I can go back to my top view here. I can move it so that it's outside of the, the wall just a little bit. And so essentially, I've set up my view so that I, it would be as if I was standing in the corner of this particular room and could then take this particular render. I'm going to save that now that I have it set up. I could go to say, set camera and then, excuse me, set view, named views. And let's call this one interior render one. So I'm going to change exterior to interior. And I'll go ahead and save. So I'm not limited to just this particular view. So that's interior render one, but I could adjust my view such that I'm down at this level, for example, looking out those windows. So there's nothing wrong with that. And I could save that view as interior render two. So frequently, you end up with multiple views as you kind of design your building and decide what views are good. Once you have your view set up here, it may be time to bring in additional items. And so for the, for the final project, you're not limited to having to create everything just yourself. Um, you could go to a website like Flying Architecture, for example. Um, Right here, I'm not asking you to pay for anything, but you can go to 3D Models. 
We can go to furniture, and they have a variety of uh, besides the load, a variety of uh, furniture pieces that you could download and and use in your scene. Some of them cost money. You don't have to buy those. If you keep scrolling around, you'll find ones that ends up being free. Like there's an IKEA sofa. That one's free. You could download that one. So if I clicked on that, it would let me download. So I can click on download. There's the file. I'll go ahead and download it. Oh, looks like I have to log in. I already have some done. You guys can do this. Like I said, there are, there are free ones uh, that you can download. So um, what you need to do when you find one of those that you want to use is go ahead and open it in, on your flash drive in a separate version of Rhino. I have under Rhino, I have uh, Rhino blocks, and then I have furniture. This is where I save some of these. So let's use um, this one here. I can go ahead and I can open that, and I want to make sure that it actually loads correctly and that the layers are set right, because I'm going to bring it in as a block, so we don't want a bunch of garbage coming in with it. So we'll open that one up, at least I hope so. And we'll deal with a few of those unsupported materials. There we go. All right. Uh, so first thing I'll do is I'll open that V-Ray Asset Editor up. Uh, and here are the two materials that they have. One's a leather and one's a chrome. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those two materials because they obviously didn't work. So I'll use the uh, purge materials. Those will go away. And then I'm going to go back into the V-Ray materials and choose leather. There's a black leather. We'll use that. And then under metal, there should be a chrome. So let's go to metal. And there's chrome polished. We'll use that one. So I have both of those pieces. Now I need to look at my layers and make sure I assign correctly. They have one layer for sofa, no sublayers. Let me give myself a sublayer for uh, frame and a sublayer for um, leather. I'm going to look here and I'm going to put these so the leather would go on the leather layer here. Let me change object layer. And let's take All right. Sorry, I'm looking through this. I think this is part of the leather, so I'm going to change that to the leather layer here. Change object layer. And they may have made this a group, so I'm going to ungroup it. Yes, yeah, so I can select this, and I'm going to put that down on the leather layer as well. And then the rest of this is going to go on the frame layer, like that. And now I have my sofa um, with the leather texture applied and the chrome applied. Now, in all, in all reality, I probably should go through and I should view this in rendered mode. And I should look through at the, um, the texture mapping and make sure the texture mapping was applied correctly. I'm not going to do that right now, but you guys can go and do that uh, for you. Oh, I didn't actually apply the, the materials yet. Let me go into V-Ray Asset Editor. Let me right click on Chrome and say Apply Material to Layer. It's going to go on the frame. Leather here, right click, Apply Material to Layer, and it's going to go on the leather layer. There we go. I'm not quite sure why it's a purple uh, leather here, but such is life. We're going to go with it. I'm going to go ahead and save this. So I'll go to File and then Save. Uh, and that's fine. And then I'll go ahead and go back to my retreat base file. So I'm working among these files. And I'm bringing things, the geometries in, in the base file. Uh, that's going to need to go in here. Bring that around here. We'll end up sticking it into this space right in there. So let's go to Edit Blocks, Insert Block Instance. And this was on my flash drive in my nope, Rhino Blocks folder. 
and we'll go ahead and open that. Linked as a reference, we'll say OK and OK, and it should let me uh, drop it in. There it is. I probably need to do some uh, modifications to how it fits in the scene. So first off, it needs to rotate. So let's rotate it around. There we go. And then we'll move it so that it's sitting more up against the wall, about like that. And then I'll go ahead and save it. So I'll go to File and then Save. The geometry is in the scene. I'll jump back to my master site. This is where I go to Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. And I'll go ahead and update that file. And this time, there we go. It updates, and I get my uh, couch installed in the scene. So at this point, once again, I'll do a test render. So I'll open up my V-Ray Asset Editor. I'll look here under Render Output. I might make it a little bit bigger, so we'll do it in the same aspect ratio, but only maybe 200 high, and we'll run this render to make sure that the lights are on and casting shadows, and that the furniture is showing up the way that I want it to, that the, the outside looks the way that I want it to. And it's looking reasonable for this first interior day render. So for today, I want you to work on continuing your uh, model. That's obviously first and foremost, you need to keep working on it. But two, try to get some lights installed and perform an interior day render in your uh, master site file. That's where those lights are going to go and that's where you're going to perform that render. So at the end of the day, you should have a render. I may ask you for more uh, renders than that, but I'm okay with just one. Uh, JPEG of it. Um, this is again based on time. So if you don't have a lot of time, you can do a small one, even though it's a little blurry, uh, because you still get a good uh, idea that things are working and your lights are installed, etc. Uh, it's important to start wrapping up your design work and getting this model built, because we're going to move into the um, night render. It'll be an interior night render next Wednesday, because we don't have class on Monday. It's a holiday. And then the following Monday will be an interior uh, or an exterior night render. And then we're basically through all the pieces of the final except the line drawings. And then we'll from there move into the line drawings. Okay? So we're just going to kind of keep pushing hard forward to get to um, some, end, some quality end product. Okay, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and start working. Let me know if you have any questions.